started. All right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the joint webinar with Ghost Inspector and Circle CI. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how you can execute your Ghost Inspector test suites with ease with Circle CI orbs. Uh, my name is Aaron Gajewski. I'm a solutions engineer here at Circle CI, and I also have with me the founder of Ghost Inspector, Justin Clem. Justin, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey everyone. Um, I'm Justin Clem. I'm the founder and tech lead of Ghost Inspector, and um, really excited to chat with you a little bit today about Ghost Inspector and uh, Circle CI. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. So just a few logistics before we get started. Uh, we are using Zoom webinar. So if you take a look at the bottom of your panel, you should see a Q&A button. So if you do have any questions that come up throughout the course of the webinar, please feel free to use that feature. And uh, Justin and I will do our best to speak to those questions in the dedicated Q&A session. In addition, uh, the slides that you're seeing here, as well as the webinar recording will be made available for you uh, on YouTube later today. So with that, let's get started. Uh, next slide. Oh, there we go. So uh, looking at our agenda, we're going to start with an introduction to Circle CI Orbs. After that, I'm going to hand it over to Justin, who's going to give you a product overview of Ghost Inspector. And from there, he'll dive a little bit deeper with a live demo of Ghost Inspector and Circle CI Orbs. Then we'll wrap up the webinar with the Q&A session. Next slide. All right, so the first question that you might have is what is an orb? So an orb is essentially a package of Circle CI configuration that you can reuse and share with the projects of your organization and ultimately the wider developer community. So an orb is going to contain predefined commands, executors, and jobs that you can then utilize by referencing them in your own Circle CI configuration. A great example of the power of orbs would be if you had a standardized deployment process, for example. Um, all, you could package up that process up into an orb, and then all of your individual projects could reference that same deployment process through the orb itself. That way, each project does not have to maintain their own deployment configuration. And on top of that, if you need to make an update to that process, you only have to update it in one place. Another thing orbs allow you to do is to easily integrate with the tools that you might like to include as a part of your CI process. So Ghost Inspector is a really great example of this, and we're going to show you how easy that integration is later in the live demo. So all in all, orbs are going to make it really easy to keep your configuration clean, and it's also going to make sure that your uh, configuration is up, up to date and in sync with what's happening in the field. So next slide. Okay, so this is a really, really simple example of an orb, and orbs are made up of three main parts. The first is commands. So commands are a set of steps that can be parameterized and then invoked later as a step in a job. The executor section, an executor is basically telling Circle CI what type of environment would I like to execute these jobs in. In jobs work very similarly to how they do today in Circle CI. It's basically just a set of steps that you'd like to run. So in this example, we have a hello build job. We're telling it to use the default executor that we defined in the executor section above. And as the first step in the hello build job, we are invoking the say hello command that we defined under the command section. So just a very simple example. Next slide. So uh, here's some examples of partner orbs that are out there today. There's lots of folks in the DevOps space, the monitoring space, code coverage. Um, if you are interested in becoming a technology partner with Circle CI, please feel free to contact us after the webinar. We'd be happy to help you get up and running with your first orb. Next slide. And I've included here uh, a bunch of links and resources and examples to help you get started. There's lots of documentation on creating your first orb. And I've also included links to the orb registry where you can go and see what orbs are already out there today. Just a note that you can include orbs and other orbs and you can extend orbs that are already existing. Um, so if you have anything or if you see any orbs that you might like to tweak for your own use case, you can certainly do that. As always, if you're uh, looking for support, please feel free to ask the community at discuss.circleci.com. We have lots of employees as well as fellow customers that are there to answer your questions. And if you're having any technical difficulties, please feel free to open up a uh, ticket at support.circleci.com. 
And with that, uh, I'll hand it over to Justin. Thanks for taking the time to attend our webinar today. We're very excited about ORBS and, and uh, very excited to share it with the wider community. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, so for anybody who's just joined, my name is Justin Clem. I'm the founder and tech lead at Ghost Inspector. Uh, and as I mentioned, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an overview uh, of Ghost Inspector uh, and then a little bit of an overview um, of our Circle CI integration. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a demo where we create a test and tie it into Circle CI. So a little bit of information about uh, Ghost Inspector. We are a cloud-based browser testing service. Um, so what we do is run end-to-end -end tests uh, on your application from a browser um, from the same perspective that a user would um, be using your application from. Um, so we're opening up browsers, we're executing steps on your application, um, and we're getting a result. We think this kind of testing is really important because ultimately, you know, you're testing from the same angle that your users will experience. But historically, it's also really challenging. Um, it's difficult to um, maintain those tests. You're dealing with your application in kind of its most complex state. Um, you need a platform to run your browser tests. And so we're really aimed at providing a cohesive solution that gives you all the tools and all the services you need um, all in one place. So um, we try to make it really simple for you to create, maintain, execute um, your tests and integrate into services like CircleCI. We launched in 2014, um, so we've been around for a while. Um, we offer a free tier. So um, if you like what you see today and you wanna give Ghost Inspector a shot, um, you can go ahead and sign up for a free tier at any point um, and, and give us a try. Um, we're currently running about 250,000 browser tests a day for our users, so we're at a pretty substantial scale uh, and we feel like we have a pretty good handle on the types of issues that that customers run into when they're trying to build out their browser tests and run their browser tests. So a little bit about what Ghost Inspector um, can do. Uh, we allow you to easily create, um, record, manage, execute browser tests against your application. Um, so we do have a test recorder that can help you um, get down the kind of the simple layout of your, of your test and the steps that you're gonna carry out. Um, but we also have a pretty robust visual editor that's gonna allow you to edit your steps, make changes, split things out into reusable modules, um, and really make your tests maintainable um, so that you can maintain them alongside of your application. We execute tests in parallel um, by default, which is a really nice feature of our service. Um, in most cases, you're generally paying for a concurrency um, with this type of thing, so you might pay for two, two concurrent VMs or four convert concurrent VMs, but um, with our service, we've always um, tried to go the parallel start from the beginning. And so if you run 20 tests, um, your 20 tests are going to run in parallel. And so we think that's a really big advantage because you can rip through your suites of tests really quickly and you're not stuck there for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes um, waiting for your browser test to complete one at a time or two at a time. Um, lots of different settings for your tests. Um, you can run them in different environments and so on. Uh, and we try to give you really detailed information about your test run. So your steps, console logs, screenshots, video of your test run, um, all the things you need to troubleshoot when issues come up. So I wanna walk through just a couple of main aspects um, that, you'll, that you'll encounter when you're using Ghost Inspector. Um, the first thing we offer I mentioned is a uh, recording tool that's available in Chrome and Firefox that lets you record yourself carrying out a test in your browser. Um, now, recording tools uh, tend to kind of get a bad rap sometimes, um, and, and, and some of that is justified. Um, in the past, there are tools that you would often use to record, and you'd end up with a pretty rigid kind of test file afterwards. And um, there's this idea of like record and playback that you're gonna create this test, and it's you know, hopefully gonna work forever. Um, the reality is that there's, there's customization and maintenance that needs to happen, but we still think um, a recorder is, is really handy. You know, if you have a UI test that's gonna carry out 15 or 20 steps, um, you might as well just record yourself doing those, capture some basic selectors, and then you can go in there and you know, apply your personal knowledge to improve those selectors, break things out, and make it more maintainable. So this is a feature we offer. Um, and then beyond that, we have a built-in editor that offers a lot more functionality. So 
all the types of things you generally going to do in a browser, you know, clicking, assigning key presses, um, but more advanced things like executing JavaScript, drag and drop, file uploads, um, lots of different types of assertions. Um, we support conditionals, so you can do things like if this element exists, you know, do this, otherwise do that. You can pull data out of the page and store it in variables and use it in the future. Um, and we support CSS and XPath for targeting. So you have a pretty good amount of functionality available to you here. When you run a test, um, we offer a pretty detailed test result, as I mentioned. So this is a sample one here. Um, you can see we've got our, our steps on the left side showing what happened in the browser. Um, you get a full video of your test run where we actually highlight the elements, what's going on, so you can see what actually happened in the browser when it ran on our servers. You get a screenshot with screenshot comparison built in, you get console logs, and we maintain this test run history for you. So you can always jump back uh, and take a look what happened in, in past results. In addition to testing functionality and making sure your application's working the way you'd expect it to work, um, it's also really um, important to make sure your application is looking the way you'd expect it to look. Um, and so one of the things that we um, bake in our service is um, visual testing. Uh, and we do that by maintaining uh, screenshots that are taken during your test runs, uh, maintaining baselines and doing comparisons each time. So every time your test runs, um, it'll, it'll take a screenshot compared to the last one, highlight changes. You can see in the slide here, it's showing you kind of a diff of the screenshot that's changed a little bit. Um, it highlights those changes uh, and it gives you some options. You know, maybe these changes were expected and you actually you know, made some style changes to your application. Uh, or maybe there's an issue and a style sheet got botched or something got overlooked uh, and you can go and address that issue. So you have some options to say like, yes, this is what my screenshot is now supposed to look like or like, oh wait, there's an issue, let me go fix that. And we have some different knobs and dials you can tweak to you know, hide elements or take the screenshot of just a specific element you know, thresholds for failure and so on. So we try to allow this, uh, give you ways to make this really uh, customizable for your situation. Lots and lots of different settings. Uh, I won't go into all these, but things like browser options, um, screen sizes. So if you wanna do, you know, your screenshot comparison on different, different resolutions and responsive designs, you can do that. Um, geolocations for running tests from different data centers. Um, and scheduling. So we're gonna look at integrating tests into our um, Circle CI build, um, but you can also take kind of a monitoring approach to run tests against production. Uh, and you can do both of those things with, with the same set of tests. Um, so, so lots of knobs and dials to, to, to tweak here. Um, finally, this is uh, just a, a, a sample of um, an actual suite, um, which is a, a kind of a grouping of tests here. Uh, and you can start to flesh these out for your application, for different aspects of your application. Uh, this is actually one that we use to test Ghost Inspector itself. So we actually kind of dog food and use our own service to test our application. Um, and you can get an idea of some of the things we check here, you know, adding, updating, removing entries, adjusting personal details, attempting a checkout, um, checking the dashboard. So all those kind of core things that you really want to make sure are working for your users. Um, those are the things you, you're going to want to consider, like, should we build an end-to-end -end test um, to make sure this is working, um, you know, in kind of the final deployed version of our application. Um, so CircleCI is a really awesome um, uh, build continuous integration system. Um, it's one we've integrated with, with for a really long time. Um, and now with, with CircleCI orbs, it's even easier. Um, I've got a really simple um, build screenshot here. You can see down at the very bottom, we've got a step to execute our Ghost Inspector tests. Um, so it's really simple to integrate Ghost Inspector into your build process um, and do pretty complex stuff if you've got your application running in the build process itself, making sure that Ghost Inspector can get in there and run those tests against that instance of your application. Um, those are the types of things that we can support pretty easily now uh, with our org. Looking at a really simple configuration here, um, you can see we've got, uh, this would be in our, our Circle CI uh, config YAML file. Um, we're using our Ghost Inspector orb. Um, we're using this um, 
execute suite option here. Um, and all, all we're doing in this case is we're passing it a suite ID um, to tell it what suite to run. Um, in this case, we're passing in a start URL. So again, this is a really simple scenario and the sort of um, the presumption here is that um, your application is running on a, on a URL, like a staging site that you're gonna pass to your ghost inspector test to run it. Um, you can pass in extra parameters and when your build process is triggered, these tests are going to run. Um, so this is really as simple as it gets, really, really easy to plug this in. Looking at a little more advanced, um, a portion of a more advanced example here, um, you know, you may not be deploying your changes to a staging site prior to your build process, but instead you're actually launching an instance of your application in your build, and that's what you want to test against. Um, so we have some really nice options for working with that, whether you're using Docker or whether you're not, got um, different ways to configure this, but essentially you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. I'm running a, the application I want to test as a Docker container, uh, and I've specified a port. So that would be the port that my application is serving. Um, you know, it might be port 80, it might be 3000, whatever it is locally in that build container. I, I give it a network and a name, uh, and then I'm using this test Docker app um, feature of our orb. Again, I'm passing it a suite ID, I'm giving it that network. Um, and then what we do is we use a tunneling tool called ngrok um, that's free. Um, this is our ngrok token here. And what that does is it opens up a tunnel inside of your build container so that your ghost inspector test can pass through into that instance of your application that's running in your build. In this case, it's my app um, on port 8080. And you can run those ghost inspector tests right inside of your build container. So we're gonna do a little demo um, here of, of Ghost Inspector and, and setting up a really simple orb. So um, let me jump out of this presentation. Uh, and I'm gonna jump over here to uh, a Ghost Inspector dashboard. So this is um, my Ghost Inspector account here that I'm logged into. Let me move my video out of the way here. Um, and so this is my dashboard and you can see I've got a couple of suites, I've got folders, I've got my tests organized, and I've already got a suite set up for this demo. I've got the Circle CI Orb demo. Um, in here I've got one really simple test already that's just opening up the home page of um, the service we're going to test. Um, but we want to create a new test uh, and then we're going to integrate that test into um, Circle CI. So to do that we're going to go ahead and use our Chrome extension. Uh, I'm gonna flip over to where I wanna create my initial test. So for this test, we're gonna test this um, service called Voxy. Voxy is an English, uh, English language um, service that a friend of mine runs. So we'll just pretend for a moment that we're like a QA or test engineer at Voxy, and we're gonna create a simple onboarding test that we're gonna tie into Circle CI. So I've got my extension installed. The first time I set this up in Chrome or Firefox, it'll have me log in. Uh, and then it's going to connect it to my account. So I can come in here um, and we're gonna create a new test. So I'm just gonna hit start recording. You can see my extension turns green. So that means it's, it's gonna capture the things I'm carrying out in the browser now. So we'll go for this test, we'll go to solutions and for individuals. We'll click on the student sign up button. Then we get kind of an onboarding flow, personalization flow that we'll go through. So we'll say, let's go. What's my language proficiency? I'll say intermediate. Next, what I wanna accomplish with my English, I wanna travel abroad. Next, what am I interested in, technology. Next, and then I land on my sign up form. So um, as part of my onboarding test, if I wanted to start to fill out this form, I could do it. Um, we have ways to customize you know, the email address so it's unique each time, things like that. But um, I'll just come up here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of stop here. I'm gonna switch over and make some assertions. Uh, so for testing, assertions are really important. They basically allow you to confirm that the actions you've carried out have resulted in the outcome that you expect. So in Ghost Inspector, in the recorder, when you click this make assertions mode, you get kind of a crosshair that highlights the elements. Uh, and the idea here is that I wanna assert that certain things are true on the page. I made some selections in the personalization flow. I selected travel abroad and technology. So I'm gonna click those text elements here 
When I do that, it's going to record assertions so that as part of my test, it's going to make sure that text is showing up. Uh, so it's a really good way to confirm that the actions I'm carrying out are actually resulting, you know, in the functionality and the outcome that I'm expecting. Now I'll come back up here and I could jump back to record operations and fill out the form. Um, but we'll just say I'm done. We'll call this test onboarding. We're going to put it in our circle CI orb demo. Uh, we'll have our screenshot comparison going and we'll do an initial test run and hit save. So when I do that, what, what the recorder does is it captures my actions as I'm walking through them in a browser, clicking, assigning, and so on. Um, it records those assertions I did at the end. And when I hit save, it packages it up into a test and it sends it off to the ghost inspector service. So now when I click this view your test link, it's gonna take me back to my ghost inspector application, got my onboarding test here in the circle CI suite. Uh, and you can see it's got an in progress test run. So the ghost inspector service has launched a browser. Um, in this case, it's, it's using Firefox and this default screen resolution. And it's walked through and carried out my steps uh, on our side, on our servers. So it's come back here. You can see it took 33 seconds to walk through the test. It started on boxy.com. On the left side here are the steps. So the recorder will do its best to choose CSS selectors. Um, but as I sh I'll show you in a sec, you can always come in and customize these um, and kind of break them out and make them more reusable. But you can get an idea of what's going on here, level four, next button, travel abroad, next button, the clicking that I was doing. Um, down here, we're checking for those goals of travel and technology um, that, that we asserted at the end. We've got browser console output. Um, in this case, it looks like there are actually a couple of JavaScript errors. And if we wanted our test to fail when those are encountered, um, we could do that. Um, over on the right side here, we get a full video of the test running on our servers. Um, and so you can see um, the elements being interacted with as the test is performed. And then finally, we get a screenshot comparison down here, the final screenshot. Uh, and you can see since this is a new baseline, it's marked it as passing. But each time this test runs, it's going to do that comparison and make sure that this is looking the way I'd expect it to look. Um, at this point, I can run the test here. I can run it through the API. And as we'll see in a minute, we can integrate it with, with Circle CI. So a couple more things I want to touch on here really quickly. Um, if I go into edit steps, this is our, our test editor here. So you can jump in and start editing these steps. You know, maybe I want to simplify the selector. Um, maybe I want to add a conditional. Um, I can start adding steps above here, um, more advanced things like JavaScript. Um, I can even import, you know, modules. So I can say, actually, you know, in the beginning of this test, I need to actually log in, but I already have that defined. So I'm just going to drop in those login steps. Um, so lots of, lots of features built around making these tests more maintainable for you and centralizing a lot of the functionality to try to take that pain out of maintaining your browser tests. We'll jump out of here. We'll take a look in our settings. We saw this screen in the slides, lots of different options around browser, scheduling, geolocation, screen sizes, et cetera. So now I've got my onboarding test um, and we want to trigger this test now um, when we push code and when we run our Circle CI builds. Um, so I've got a simple project set up um, in visual code here and you can see I've got my config YAML file open. So this is presumably you know, in um, the repo where this application actually, you know, exists and is launched. Um, and in this case, I'm, I've got it set up to execute a test. Um, so what we want to do is drop in this new test ID for the test we just recorded. Uh, and we'll just drop that in there. Um, now, realistically, you're probably going to want to trigger a suite here. You may even trigger multiple suites. Um, but to keep this simple, um, for right now, we'll just drop the test in and we'll trigger that in our build. I'll go ahead and save this. Um, we'll take a look uh, in Git here and you can see uh, I'm swapping in this new ID, so we'll commit this. So I'll say new test ID that's going in our Circle CI config. We'll commit that. We'll push it to GitHub. pop over here to GitHub where I have this, this 
repo open, make sure that latest commit got in there. So our new test ID commit has showed up. And if I pop over now to circle CI with a little luck, our new build is running here. So you can see we've got this new commitment. It's running down here. It's, you can see it's spinning up. And below that, it's going to execute our ghost inspector steps. And once that happens, we'll be able to see um, our test running on the ghost inspector side. Um, I noticed that there's some partially um, degraded service, so workflows are a little bit delayed. Um, we'll see if this is able to, to wrap up in a minute or two here um, so we can get the full effect. Um, but it looks like it's still spinning up the environment. But what will happen essentially um, is that this ghost inspector test will be triggered by Circle CI. It'll pass back, you know, pass or fail to Circle CI. If you're running a whole suite, it'll pass back, you know, kind of an overall pass or fail for that suite. Send it back to Circle CI, which will then pass or fail the build. Um, while we're letting this run, hoping it, hoping it finishes up, I'm going to pop back into Visual Code, um, Visual Studio Code, and we'll take a look at uh, the more complex example um, that I had in the slides. And so this is kind of a full full config file for um, that setup where you're you're going to be launching your application um, in your actual build process and running the test there. So. Um, you can see a, a bit more configuration here, setting up our executor um, to use Docker. Um, we're using um, this test Docker app that I mentioned, and similar to what was shown in the slide. So um, we set up a network, we start our application. Again, we define what port that application is gonna run on um, so that we can tunnel into it. We create a tunnel um, to that port so that Ghost Inspector can run our tests on that instance of our application. Um, pass in the suite ID. So in this case, like for a test ID, I think I could do this and I could pass in the test ID that we generated. You define your network and the token you need to open that tunnel. Uh, and then you say, you know, my app port 8080 is, is where this application is going to be served and Ghost Inspector um, will, will trigger those tests on the application. So I'll come back here. Looks like this looks like this job is a little bit delayed. So I don't know if it's going to complete for the demo. Oh, it did. Nice. Um, so you can see you spun up the environment, execute ghost inspector tests. Let's pop back over um, to onboarding here and do a refresh. And here we can see we've got this latest test run, 30 seconds. This one was triggered by Circle CI. Um, if we come down here, you can see we've got two runs. So this first one is the one we triggered manually. Um, this is in our build process. Um, and so now I can come out here, you know, to the suite, I can start building out additional tests um, and start to hook in this entire suite to my build process. And whether I'm running this on a staging server that's set up prior to my build, or whether I'm running it right inside of my build container, um, our orb has options for that. So that's what I wanted to demo. I'm gonna pop back over to the slides for just a minute here. Um, and just kind of do a little recap. Um, so Ghost Inspector is really all about giving you a cohesive product for creating, recording, managing, executing your tests, um, and take, take away some of that pain from having to glue together a bunch of different tools um, and do lots of um, you know, pretty technical um, stuff. We try, to, we try to lower that bar and make it really easy so you can um, get up and running and testing um, and also give you those tools to maintain your tests um, so that this is like, you know, a lasting endeavor for you. Uh, with the Circle CI orbs now, um, it's really easy to integrate this uh, into Circle CI. It's easier than ever. And whether you're running against a staging server or whether you're running in your build container, both of those are supported um, and they're, they're really straightforward to set up. Um, and when you've got this kind of set up in place, you can check the functionality of your site uh, or app. You can check the visuals. You can do it from that final kind of standpoint of the user to make sure your back end and front end and everything is working nicely together. Uh, and you can get that, that extra level of security to make sure your application is working the way you expect it to work. Um, that's everything I've got. I hope um, that's useful to you. As I mentioned, Ghost Inspector's got a free tier. You can sign up and give it a shot. 
Um, we've got lots of documentation online for the things I covered um, and always happy to help if you're in the process of, of setting this up um, to jump in on, on either side, on the, on the Ghost Inspector side of Circle CI um, and get you up and running with this. Um, so thanks everybody. I'm gonna um, take a look at some of the QA and see if there are any, um, any questions I can kind of answer for anybody off the bat, but feel free to submit questions uh, and we'll try and, try and get them answered. Thanks, Justin. That was an awesome demo. Looks like we got one question here um, from Todd. Does the tool currently capture changes made via CSS content, but not altering the DOM? Um, changes made via CSS content, but not. Um, so if the, it would probably, if you're doing, um, Actually, that's something I would have to check on. So I, I think the scenario he's talking about would be if you do like an assertion um, and the DOM has, you know, ABC in this element um, and you've modified it to like XYZ with the CSS content property, which one is going to record uh, in the recorder? That's actually a great question that I, I don't have an answer for off the top of my head. Um, I feel like it may record what's in the DOM, um, but that's probably something that we could tweak um, or that you could tweak afterwards or that we potentially have a setting to, to tinker with. Um, if, if, um, actually I'll just, I'll just make a note, um, and try to follow up afterwards and, and get, get an official answer to that question. Thank you for your question though. That's a, that's a good one. Awesome. Um, so it looks like, uh, we don't have any, uh, unanswered questions at the moment. Um, I'd like to ask the audience, if you do have any questions, please feel free to use the Q and A feature. Um, we'll stick around for a couple minutes just to make sure all your questions are answered. All right. Looks like no unanswered. Oh, actually, we just got one. Um, so uh, have you thought about extending this service to work with A-B testing? Um, a little bit. So generally when we encounter AB testing on our end, what's happening is, um, someone is saying, Hey, I want to test this flow. You know, maybe it's a sign up flow, but right now we're running an AB test on it. So some users are routed this direction, you know, with this DOM or these set of, you know, screens and other users are routed this way. And how do we test that? You know, because ghost inspector might get route a one time and route B another. Um, we have a couple of options for dealing with that. One is to kind of like sort of circumvent the AB test with Ghost Inspector and route it down a specific direction. That can be done with like kind of disabling the JavaScript when that's encountered um, or like a flag. The other thing we have that's new and pretty nice is conditionals. So you can actually build that into your test and say, um, you know, some kind of check, you use JavaScript to do these conditionals. So you could say, if this element is encountered or this screen or this text, run this set of steps. If this one is encountered, run these set of steps to support those two different AB routes or, you know, ABC or however many variations you have. Um, so from our perspective, that's usually how we encounter AB testing. Um, we don't have anything baked in to do AB testing on our side since we're more of like functional testing to make sure things are working. But in most cases, you can usually um, design your test in a way now with conditionals to test both routes. Thank you for your question. Awesome, thanks, Justin. So it uh, looks like we, oh, we just, oh, perfect. Uh, we just got a comment, great explanation and great webinar. Thanks, Justin. Oh, thank you guys. <laughs> so it looks like we don't have any other unanswered questions. If you do uh, come up with any questions after the webinar, uh, you can contact uh, Ghost Inspector at help at ghostinspector.com. Um, on the Circle CI side, you can reach out to the community or you can email me at Aaron at circleci.com. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, we'd just like to thank everyone for taking the time to attend the webinar. We hope it was helpful. And thank you, Justin, for uh, not only the great demo, but for being a great partner in Ghost Inspector with Circle CI. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. And thank everybody for joining today. Um, it was really my pleasure to present. And um, as always, happy to answer questions and, and help you all on your testing journey. Awesome. Well, I uh, hope everyone has a great rest of your, uh, rest of your day and take care.